It started in uh, middle school. I, I actually had trouble uh, learning in middle school. And uh, there were a couple other guys in my class who were African-American descent, and we'd all go to a special class so that we'd get extra help. And every time on our way to this class, they would start picking on me. And I was the only white guy there. What should have been a five minute walk to class took about 30 minutes because they were now grabbing me by my shirt and throwing me up against the wall. And, and this is my first encounter with, uh, with black people. And you know, being my first encounter, that, that created a lot of issues for me. Uh, by the time I was 16, I moved out of the house and where I lived ended up meeting a couple of people who, in <laughs> some apartments I lived in, were, were Klan members. Yeah, that, that time wasn't a good time either. I was, I was heavy into drugs and that they had got me started into meth, coke, and all this other stuff. And that just fueled fire onto my hatred towards, towards black people. And, and that, that went on for a good several years. Actually, she was a hairdresser. hairdresser at the time, and I just went in for a haircut, and I just immediately went to her, and I was like, wow, this is a beautiful woman. And we started yeah. talking, like, you know, he came up, and I was like, hi, I'm Jaleesa, and he's like, I'm Jose, and I felt like sparks flying, but then I was like, I don't know about this, but I eventually I actually gave him my card, and I normally don't give men my card to come back and get a haircut, but for some reason he was like, this different person, so I was like, okay, I'll give him my number. I honestly, I was, uh, wasn't sure what was going on. I was like, okay, is this, did she give it to me to talk to her? Or did she give it to me just to call her when I need a haircut? So I went up there again, two days, three days in a row, and she wasn't working. And then finally on the fourth day, she was there. <laughs> That's when I, I asked her about the number. Just felt like this, like, heaviness, like somebody wanted to ask something. So I'm like, I'll just wait a little bit longer. And then finally yeah. he's like, hey, do you want to go to the movies with me? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then we went to the movies and the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. Stepping the line of faith truly crossed when she invited me to the church that she was attending. And it was a, it was a primarily all black church. <laughs> so that was a, a new deal as well to deal with for me. Um, I know that I was really nervous when I first asked him, because I think I contemplated, like, do I really want to ask him to church? I'm like, yes, I need to ask him to church because, you know, at the time, you know, I was seeking my relationship with Christ and really growing in Him. And I was like, if I am to date this person, like, hey, this is what I, I need him to be in the Lord, you know? The first time that I was up there at the church with her, it's like the, the pastor did an altar call and I just, just felt the spirit come over me and I just, I broke down in tears. And that was also a, another release because, I mean, I met her, but I still had a part of that old, old me still, still wanting to, to, to say something. But at that time, when I saw all these guys just surround me, it's just, it just, it's like God was like taking it away. He was taking it away. <laughs> 